All right, in this lecture, I'd like to just go over a few examples with you and discuss how we might translate some of our typical direct style recursive functions over to using tail recursion. I think these are the kinds of things that don't quite make sense at first, but they really become a lot more obvious once you work through a few different examples. And you'll sort of see there are some sort of key cookbook techniques we can kind of use to write things in the tail recursive style. Now I will say, learning how to write functions using tail recursion is a learning objective for the course. I don't necessarily think it's the case that every function you write should be tail recursive. Although I do think that learning how to write things using tail recursion is a good exercise in thinking about how to structure code in a nice way. And it also challenges you to understand a, the concept of a tail call and trying to understand what it means to have a tail recursive function and why we might want to use that, which I think is relevant computing history for sure, uh, at least with respect to its implementation in older languages like C and C++. All right, so let's write some traditional uh, direct style recursive functions. So the length of the list L, we're going to say match L. And if it's the empty list, the length is zero. Otherwise, if it's a cons of a head and a tail, or I, I'm going to write this quasi quote syntax. So if it's a head and a tail, then it's going to be one plus the length of the tail. So length of tail. All right, and let's try length of one, two, three. Uh, I can also use this function range. That'll give me the list of numbers. So I could do something like length of five. All right, so let's write this function using a tail recursive style. So I'm gonna define fit or uh, length tail, which is gonna be L. And usually when we write tail recursive functions, we wanna have a helper function that's going to keep various things like accumulators and things like that. So we're gonna have define, uh, let's say our helper is gonna be called H. We're gonna have L for the list that we're gonna be going down and then uh, accumulator ACC. So we're gonna use this accumulator to track a value that we're gonna start incrementing. And then that'll make it so that every time we call forward to length tail, we don't have to put anything on the stack. So now I can do, uh, I can say match L and I can say, all right, if it's the empty list, uh, we're going to return the accumulated value because we're gonna pass that forward, all right? Otherwise, if it's a uh, head followed by a tail, then we're going to call h with the tail and then uh, add one to the accumulator. And we're gonna start this out uh, by calling it with l and then zero. So what's gonna happen here is that this accumulator is gonna track the length of the list. Every time we see another link in the list, we're gonna iterate by going on the tail and then adding one to this accumulator here. So I can see this is a tail recursive call here we don't have to do anything from returning from H. Remember that bodies of match clauses are in uh, tail position. And this is because you can only fire one at a time. Once the first one fires, you don't have to go back and check anything else. All right, so let's call length tail, run that. All right, so that one works as well. Let's try some other functions. So let's do uh, append of L0 and L1. So we're gonna say match L0. We're gonna say if L0 is the empty list, we're gonna return L1. Otherwise, if we're cons of a head and a tail, and then this is going to be cons of head with append uh, tail and then L1. All right, so that's our normal direct style recursive function. So direct style append. So this function is not tail recursive because after our call to append right here, we have to cons on this head element. All right, so now let's think about how could we make this version of append more tail recursive. So Let's say we wanna do uh, append tail of L0 and L1. We're gonna define this function H. 
Uh, and what H is going to do is it's going to have L0 and L1 as its arguments. We've also noticed that tail recursive functions, usually one trick that we can get to work out is we can add what's called an accumulator. So we're going to have some accumulator value that we keep adding information to as we go through. All right. So we have this accumulator value that we're going to be building up. And then we could say, let's match L0. If L0 is the empty list, well, in our last, uh, in our last exercise, we saw that we could return the accumulator here rather than, uh, rather than L1. So that should maybe give you an idea of what's going on. Instead of tracking L1 right here, let's have this be the accumulator value. And then when we initialize our call to H, we're going to have to do something over here with this con cell in a minute, but I'm going to come back to that. When we initialize this call to H, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in L0 and we're going to pass in L1. Let's see what happens. So here, let's see what happens if I, I'm going to call H and then I'm going to call L0 and then I'm going to cons on to L1 this result uh, head to, uh, to L1. Now I could try calling H with that and seeing what happens. So let's execute this version of a pinned tail. Let's just see what it does. What we're doing is we're going to call H right here. It's going to walk through L0. It's going to keep building things on to the head of L1. Let's see what happens if we implement a pinned tail like this. So we're going to do a pinned tail 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. We're not making it any smaller. That's because I'm recursing here on L0. It needs to be tail. All right, so a pinned tail. Let's try it again. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we get 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so now I made another mistake. It turns out this should have been ACK, not L1. So that gave me this weird error. So I need to be careful for things like that when I program. Um, so now let's try append tail. And this is going to be 0, 1, 2 and then three, four, five, and we get two, one, zero, three, four, five. All right, so we're gonna see that what happens is that naturally when I code things up using this tail recursive style, I'm gonna get it reversing various points of the list because it's going to construct things front to back rather than back to front. If I sit down and think about how it textually reduces, that's something that you should think about for a pinned tail. Sit down and try to apply textual reduction just by yourself on a small example like zero and then one. Or maybe let's make it more interesting because we won't see the bug yet. So zero, one, let's say two, three. So we get one, zero, two, three. So how could we modify this function so that it would get us the right behavior? Well, one trick that we could do is we could just modify the input here so that we reverse the input to this list and then we'll get the right answer. All right, so I could call reverse here on L0 and now I can call append tail 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and it works out precisely as I'd think. Now the reason that I'm able to do that is because I can reverse the input. So frequently it's going to happen that if you write functions in a tail recursive way, you're going to naturally end up getting various elements of them reversed because you're going to be processing them in sort of the different order. So you should be careful to make sure that if you want them in the correct output order, you should reverse them and think about how that might work and in impact your code. Do it right now. So I can implement reverse, define reverse of L, and then I'm going to write my helper function H with my accumulator ACK right here. And I'm going to say match L. If it's the empty list, return the accumulator. 
That's a sensible thing to do, especially when I write functions using this tail recursive style. I have the, uh, this accumulator based style and I often return my accumulator. Otherwise, it's a con cell of a head and a, uh, a tail. And I'm going to call h of l and then I'm just going to cons head onto the accumulator. So what does that mean? I'm going to have to make the initial accumulator be just the empty list. Now let's see what happens when I when I perform this uh, when I perform this function. So if I do reverse of 0 1 2, I get oops. See I made a mistake here. I'm always recurring on L. This needs to get smaller. I want it to be tail. All right, so I can do reverse 0 1 2 and I get 2 1 0. So why does that happen precisely? Well, let's use our textual reduction semantics to help us remember. So let's just try it on a smaller example, reverse uh, 0, 1. That's going to be match 0, 1 with, and then it's uh, not the first thing, it's the second thing. So this match will bind into this body, and so it will be h, and then the tail will be the list 1 and then cons of what the head matched to, which was zero with the accumulator, which started out as the empty list. So that's gonna be zero. And then we call this again, that's gonna be call H on just the empty list. And then one cons on to the front of this list. And then finally, when we get the empty list back, well, now we're just gonna return this argument right here. All right, so because we naturally cons things onto the front of the accumulator as we walk through the list, we can write an obvious definition of tail recursion using, uh, sorry, we can write an obvious definition of, all right, so because reverse pulls things off the front of the list and accumulates them and cons them onto an accumulator at the end, we can get this nice obvious definition. All right, let's continue lecture by looking at what tail recursion would look like for some of these more structured data types like trees and things like that. So we're going to define binary trees. All right, so we're going to define binary trees as either uh, empty or a node of some value and then a uh, binary tree on the left and then a uh, binary tree on the right. We're gonna say either of those things are binary trees, otherwise uh, otherwise they're not. So otherwise we're gonna return false. All right, so let's assume that we've got a sorted binary tree, which looks something like this. So something like node of, oops, we need values, don't we? So I guess we could represent empty values uh, but we could also just add in a leaf here. So let's add in leaves. Going to be some element. Now we can have something like node of, let's say, uh, 10, and then leaf of 0. On the right side, we'll have leaf of 20. Uh, and this is a sorted tree. So let's say, how can we define the minimum value? So let's define min. Uh, tree value. So we're going to match t. Let's say it's uh, empty. Well, that's just going to be an error. You can't look up the minimum value from an empty tree. Uh, otherwise, let's say it's, uh, it's a leaf. So if it's just a leaf of some value, it's just going to be that value. Otherwise, if it's a sorted tree, it's always going to be at the farthest uh, at the farthest left. So it's a node, got some value here, got some left element here. Uh, then this is going to be, uh, and remember I'm using underscores because these are don't cares, they're just wild cards, they'll match anything. So since I'm not gonna bind them, I don't want them. So I wanna go down the left branch and I'm gonna say min tree value of L. Well, let's call that, uh, no L is fine for left. And now this function is tail recursive, right? So if I do min tree value of uh, node 
10, leaf 0, leaf 20, it returns 0. All right, so that's a tail recursive function. What if I wanted to write something like uh, sum tree? So let's say sum tree. I want to match t here. This is going to be empty. The sum of the empty tree we're going to say is 0 uh, to sum a leaf. So if I have a leaf's value v, uh, that's just v. Otherwise, if I've got a node of uh, some node value v and then some t0 and t1, that's going to be plus v uh, t0, so sum tree t0, because that could be a tree in, zero, uh, in general, and then sum tree t1. OK, so that's the direct style recursive definition. Why is it direct style? Because after I call some tree right here, I have to remember to then go call some tree right here. After I call some tree right here, I actually have to perform that entire application of plus, and then I'll exit. How could you write some tree as a uh, tail recursive function? It's not really super trivial to do. You have to be pretty careful about how you might do it, and it sort of takes a while. So I would say think about it and think about what that technique would be. That's definitely one of the trickier ones. All right, so those are some practice exercises for tail recursion. Remember to practice translating various small direct style functions into using tail recursion. In fact, I would take any function you've written so far in the course and I would ask yourself, if it's a recursive function, is it using direct style recursion or is it using tail recursion? If it's not using tail recursion, how could you rewrite it to use tail recursion? That would be an awesome way to practice for the exam. Mm -hmm.